preferably this whole area here. And then if you want to load it, 44 days of crazy, that's what you can do. 44 days of crazy, put it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So welcome to Twickenham, if you've just arrived in Twickenham, come across, look both ways, if you're crossing the road, look both ways, and then come over to the Mastercard bus, that's right, and we've got lots of stuff going on here, fantastic, we, we paint you. confident are you feeling? You played some great rugby Argentina but it's a big big challenge today isn't it for you? Yes, it's a big challenge but I, I trust in the team and I think we can beat them. They always seem to surprise people don't they Argentina? They always have something up their sleeve to surprise people. <laughs> you just speak English. Yes, we have magic. Yeah. And, and who's, your, who's your match winner in there? Who's, who's going to really scare Argentina, uh, Australia in that Argentina side? <laughs> I think Imov and Cordero van a estar muy bien el partido. Will, will, be, uh, will be great in the match. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we wish you all the best. Let's wander over this way over here. Speak to a couple. Marcos Ayersa, number two and the captain, Austin Gray. And number three, Ramiro Herrera. With the number four, Guido Petty. Number five, Tomás Lavanini. Number six, Pablo Matera. Number seven, Juan Martín Fernández Loe. And the number eight is Leonardo Senatore. Number nine, Martín Landajo. Number ten, Nicolás Sánchez. Number twelve, Juan Martín Elmao Hernández. Number thirteen, eh, Marcos Bosch. Marcelo. Number eleven, Juan Imov. Number 14, Santiago Cordero, and the number 15 is Joaquin Tubulet. Now you're cheering, okay. Uh, quick score prediction, what do you reckon? Score prediction. School? Yeah, the score. What's the score going to be today? <laughs> no? uh, Just getting a quick translation. 30... 20. 30, 20. Today's semi-final. Twickenham, a big warm welcome for the England international, James Haskell! Yeah. I was listening to the car and yeah, it was pretty nail-biting stuff. I think um, what was interesting was just the ability to keep the composure. You know, the World Cup can be decided by a bounce the ball, by a referee's decision. It doesn't really matter about how much preparation you put in. And New Zealand just kept the composure. That key line-out still from Sam Whitelock at the end just made a massive difference. And they're into the final. What more do you want? So who's going to be joining them and why? Um, I think the Australia side that I saw play England, I was in the stand, so I had nothing to do with it. Uh, just get that very clear now. Um, did you feature at the World Cup? I can't remember. I did. I was the kit man and I was in charge of bringing water on. Um, might have seen me the best water carrier ever. Uh, no, I think if Australia play like they played um, against us, uh, that they'll, you know, I think they, they would definitely go through. But Argentina, I mean, they come alive at World Cups. They do so well. They destroyed a very, very good Irish side in, you know, in pretty simple fashion. So I expect the passion, the, the fact that they're looking at going to their first final is a uh, reason to, to pull it out of the bag. Had that training together. Now they consistently get that with the Rugby Championship. They're getting better and better and better, getting more and more uh, victories in that tournament. And I think ultimately, um, this World Cup especially, they're beginning to show their real quality. And with Argentina, you, it's do or die. They literally leave everything out of the line. You see it from the, the very, you sort of tears in the anthem to the to the final whistle. They give 100%. What have you got here? So you know, team sheets. No, you don't need that. You don't need that. <laughs> we'll bring that on a rugby day. We'll bring you that up here. Right. So that's James Haskell, and that's Argentina talked about. Let's find out though how Australia.
pathetic, absolutely pathetic. But right, this man, <laughs> this man is going to get the Australia team uh, on that screen. For us, what's your name? Dale. Where are you from, Dale? Brisbane. Can I ask you a question? What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> we stand in a hole here. You'd expect that from a bummy. <laughs> so, always bringing the English into it. Unbelievable. Uh, can we get you a stool, a stool or a stand or something? <laughs> <laughs> Do we get my shoulders? Ignore him. Yeah. Ignore him. Ignore him. Look at me. Just look at, don't look into his eyes. Once you look into his eyes, he's got you. Um, what are we thinking about today, Dale? I mean, the, the Scotland match certainly wasn't the performance you were looking for, was it? No, it wasn't. It was a bit disappointing. We almost had our pants pulled down. But uh, I think we got a different team against England, didn't they? They certainly did, yeah. Um, there's no doubt. Lots of rub, rub it in or anything? No, no. I was no. in the stand. Oh, I made that very clear I was in the stand. <laughs> so were a lot of other reasons. But, uh, yeah, no, I think um, this will be a different team today. A lot more focused, a lot more attacking. I think we're for a great game of rugby. Right, this is uh, it's actually quite embarrassing because this is one of the quietest uh, spectator plans we've had. And it's the semi-finals, by the way. It's nearly all over, so let's make some noise. Australian fans, let's get this Australian team on the screen, Dale. Okay. Number one, James Slipper. Number two, Stephen Moore. Three, Sakopi Kepu. One of my personal favourites, Kane Douglas. Yes, Queenslander! Another Queenslander, Rob Simmons, number five. Scott Fardy, number six. And the turnover machine, number eight, David Pocock. And the attacking machine, the other side, Michael Hooper, number seven. Great halfback, Will Ganya. Hopefully better kicking today from Bernard Farley. Number 10, Matt Ditto, what a comeback, what a legend, number 12. Bigger game from Tavita Kurunjani today in 13. Drew Mitchell on number 11 on the wing. And big Israel Folau, going to be nightmares all night for the Argentines at 15. And 14 on the wing, Adam Ashley Cuba, also sensation. Excellent, Dale. Let's hear it for Dale and Australia! Dale, now you're making some noise. Dale, weirdly enough, Will's been doing this for the last 10 years and you were better in 15 seconds than he has his entire career. <laughs> And honestly, the amount they're paying him, mate, a couple of beers, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? You, you know we're on. Oh, well, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. Don't know who invited him. Anyway, two and a half hours till kick off here at Twickenham. The second semi final, Argentina against Australia. More build up in a couple of minutes from me, and this guy's had a pretty tough paper round. James Haskell, see you shortly. <laughs> Uh, will decide this game, but discipline uh, most importantly. A uh, couple of tweets as well. Austin Healy says the Pumas are on an upward curve. Their scrum is excellent. Their back row tenacious and backline terrifying. Matt Gitto says they're a physical team, very passionate Argentina, but they also like to throw the ball around. If you give them a loose ball, they're going to punish you. So I fell asleep any time Austin Healy speaks. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to wake me back up. No, it's funny because his media career is going a lot better than yours. Oh, oh, really, really. And slightly better than your lid as well. Can we get an emergency hairdresser for Mr. Perry, please? West Car Park. A long way to go, isn't there? A long, long way to go. I hope we can put up with this uh, stinky band. So let's move it on. Daniel Schofield from The Telegraph says, uh, assuming that David Pocock is not fit. Well, I think we can avoid that one because he's always fit. Thanks for giving us that one. And uh, Michael Checker, another one from him. He says, Pocock, strong mentality, so it would be very difficult to um, stop him even if he wasn't fit. We feel more than comfortable uh, that he's there to do the job for us. So Pocock, obviously, crucial. And Falau, of course, back for Australia, which is going to be massive. Yeah, Falau is one of the most dangerous um, attacking players in, in world rugby. His ability to, to catch the high ball, then with, combined with footwork, beating defenders is outstanding. But you know, Argentina have a, a, a very physical defence. You know, talked a lot about their passion and that comes out in their defensive system. They're also very competent in the attack. If, if uh, Sanchez at 10 delivers the way he's been playing this World Cup, then Australia will be under pressure. But just a point about Michael Checker. I was lucky enough to play under him at um, Stade Francais. You know, he's a very unique coach, different than most people out there. When he speaks, um, you kind of listen. And a lot of coaches use um, big words and talk it up, but with Michael Checker, you kind of know that he would go out there and fill the players in if you did.
they're still making their way down to Twickenham. Right, keep the tweets coming, keep your questions, your pictures coming. At Rugby World Cup, use that hashtag, RWC2015. Are you ready for a bit of music? Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll have to last a bit nicer than that. Are you ready for a bit of music? Yeah. Please welcome to the stage, Twickenham, the Rosalie Band. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Credit to Argentina. I think if you if you enjoy your rugby, then watching Argentina play today, they were sensational. Uh, some of the attacking play that they put together. I think personally, they probably played in the wrong areas. They'll be frustrated by that. But if you do that again, you're a drawback of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, listen. I mean, you know, it's, it's all set for a massive final. Yeah. Of course, Australia winning six right. games at the Rugby World Cup into the final, the bronze final that will be between South Africa and Argentina. Tweets, and you can keep these coming at Rugby World Cup. Use the hashtag RWC25. Dean Ben Foden of England and Northampton Saints says, having both Hooper and Hooper on the field at the same time is just unfair. Every team's nightmare. Peter says, played you know, a lot of times for better rugby, but they just didn't take their opportunity when they had them. They played so much rugby, but in their uh, in their own heart. And you just can't do that in a, a team like Australia because someone like Pocock. If you carry the ball 20 times, he's going to get you on one time. And because they've changed the clear out rules now, you can't clear people out by the net. You have to get a proper legal clear out. He's very difficult to shift. And if you can't get rid of him, then Hooper comes in to steal the ball. And I think Argentina have got to be proud of what they did, but they will be disappointed that they didn't take the opportunities when they came. A few more tweets here. Hugo Monia says, Congratulations, Australia, but thank you, Argentina, for your passion, your spirit, and emotion. You brought the World Cup to life. Matt Dawson says, New Zealand will be licking their lips at this physical battle. Nick says, What an advert for open running rugby. Will Shaw on Twitter. Australia, put uh, back row, Australia back row, as I say, putting on a clinical performance tonight. And Shaw says, Australia can beat New Zealand the way you are. Play. We will be back with some live music in a couple of minutes. Uh, and also James will pick out his one good and his one not so good. See you in a bit. to make you uh, go home in style this evening. James Haskell, the England International, with us tonight as well. Uh, James, you picked out your one good and your one not so good. The reason it's called that, because Andy Good is normally with us, he couldn't be bothered tonight, so we got lumbered with this wildebeest. Yeah, very unfortunate. Um, I half the price of Andy Good, so, and half the weight as well, so that's why I've been invited along today. My first, oh, he likes it over there. Cheers, mate. One person in us. He's got no idea what I said. Um, so my first, uh, my, my one goo for this evening was uh, Drew Mitchell's uh, break, a fantastic bit of play from a driving line out. Fitz's incredible pass, we have a look at it now. Great work down the wing, showing speed for over 30 years old, still showing he's got it. So unlucky, looking to try to record the, uh, equal the World Cup record, and then a little bounce pass out to Adam Ashley Cooper to get his hat trick. Uh, fantastic work there, and I know what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, you, you were talking about Drew Mitchell there coming inside, but Ad Adam Ashley Cooper tonight in general, how is he for you? Because all the talk was about Drew Mitchell wasn't equaling Brian Havana and John Alomu, but what about Ashley Cooper's performance? I was, except he got some game time and played in the semi-final, never mind, um, and he was uh, he was obviously pretty disappointed not to be playing, but to come in and play like he did was pretty fantastic. Now today's not so good, uh, was really um, Argentina's first 10 minutes, if you want to see it now. Again, Argentina like to play with the ball so flat to line, but Drew Mitchell there almost getting an interception, and then a couple of seconds later, Rob Simmons getting over second row, I mean, the problem with playing so flat to the line is that if you, if you, don't, if you don't get the passes accurate and you don't pick the right time, and if, for me Argentina were outstanding today, but they played in, in all the wrong areas. 
being 100% fit, well you wouldn't have noticed that tonight, would you? In Australia, successful in 81% of their tackles. Have a look at this. Dingo. He couldn't look more Australian this guy, could he? And your name? Rodrigo. Where are you from, Rodrigo? Argentina. Where am I, Argentina? Whereabouts? Yeah, what, what? Where in Argentina? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires, okay, excellent. Right, so Haskell, show them what, how it's done. Tell these boys what they're going to look for here through the posts. I can't kick, actually. Can you do a big arena? Get Haskell to do a big arena. Oh! Oh! Horrific effort. Absolutely horrific effort. Sorry, the okay. shoes, the shoes. Right, let's line this one up here. Let's get uh, a slow clap going, shall we, for Australia. Start a slow clap. Come on. Come on. Go. See if you can do any better than Haskell. He's got the style, he's definitely got the style. He's got the stance, he's got a terrible haircut, sponsored by the NHS. Well, carry on, carry on. In your own time, son. Come on. He's wearing his uncle's shoes. <laughs> oh! He copied Haskell's kick and he's wide. Right, let's see if Argentina can win it. Let's hear it for Argentina! his arm round, but when you tackle someone so low, and for someone like Israel Folau, because he's got such good footwork, you almost have to tackle where you think he's going to be. He just got caught out, but that's the way the World Cup goes. Okay, just final thoughts then. Obviously there's the bronze final to play, isn't there, next Friday night, South Africa, Argentina. It should be a great game, and, and Argentina on form, and especially for this one, you'd imagine they're going to have a right go at South Africa. Yeah, look, you know, the third, fourth playoff was always a very, very difficult game. Everyone's eye is going to be on the final. You, you know, both teams are going to be so disappointed. Um, you know, South Africa especially, as they fell short to, to, to New Zealand. But it will be a great encounter. Um, I think I'm going to back Argentina for that victory. I hope there's no South Africans in the crowd. Um, and, I, and I think it will be a good game. But mentally for the players, they're going to need to take a rest. Both games were pretty physical. You saw a lot of injuries and possibly the third, fourth playoff might be an opportunity for some of the boys who haven't played that much in the World Cup to get some game time. New Zealand against Australia, what a final we have got ahead of us down here at Twickenham, 4 o'clock next Saturday. Your thoughts on that one? I mean, I guess for, for a lot of people, apart from yourself, that is the final lot we're hoping for. Yeah, I think um, you know, we've got you know, good defensive teams, both sides go very hard at the breakdown, but I think that's the area to watch. Pocock, if he's fit versus McCaw, it's going to be the big occasion. Australian fans! You're a mighty, mighty nation! This one's for you!
covered the wall and came in slow.